Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I welcome you to the tenth lecture of the series of lectures on advanced computer architecture. Today, our focus will be the pipeline architecture. Till last time, we have been talking about the single cycle data path and multiple cycle data path. Last time I discussed in details what are the key components of multi cycle data path and then we discussed the comparison between the single cycle data path and multiple cycle data path. We also noticed that the performance of multi cycle data path is better as compared to the performance of single cycle data path. Today we will be talking about the pipeline architecture. The basic concept of the pipeline architecture lies in the fact that we can execute an instruction in multiple steps utilizing different parts of the data path. The pipeline architecture also suggests that we can start with multiple instructions during complete execution of one instruction. In order to understand what is pipelining, I will give you an example of uh, daily life uh, washing of your uh, clothes. Suppose you have got uh, automatic uh, machine, an automatic machine to wash your loads and you have got say a machine placed in your hostel at one floor and at one instant of time say four different students want to wash their loads and if the machine completes the washing operation in four steps. Say the first step is washing, the second step is drying, the third step is folding that is uh, ironing and folding and the last step is say placing your uh, washed clothes in the drawer. For this purpose as you can see from this uh, diagram that these four steps can be performed in a particular sequence one after the other. Here if we assume that each of these operations takes 30 minutes then one complete load can be washed in two hours. Whereas the four loads therefore will be completely washed in eight hours. So this means that anybody who placed its uh, load in a queue in the beginning of uh, the washing uh, time, it will take eight hours for the last load to get completely washed. However, let us see how we can uh, enhance the performance of uh, the washing machine and the overall uh, washing process. This we can uh, very easily do by using the concept of pipelining. That is if we divide the machine into four or uh, this whole operation into four steps and say each step is to be performed by one particular unit which means that instead of using this uh, automatic machine, let us suppose that we have got uh, machine divided into two parts that is washer is a separate unit and dryer is a separate unit. Then in this case again we assume that each step takes 30 minutes but here if we assume that the first load is 
placed into the washing machine and the washing machine is switched on. After 30 minutes, the washing machine completes its operation and its washed loads load is transferred to the dryer and now the washer is free to get or accept a second load. So therefore, at this time, the second load is placed into the washer and the first load is now available in the dryer and again both the washer and the dryer are switched on simultaneously. They take both these units take uh, 30 minutes to complete their operation. So after 30 minutes when the first load has been dried and the second load has been washed, the dried load is handed over to the folder and now the dryer is available for the second load. The second load from the washer is transferred to the dryer and now the washer is free for the third load. So the third load is placed in the washer and all the three operations now start simultaneously. Now after next 30 minutes when the folder has completed the ironing and folding process, dryer has completely dried the second load and the washer has washed the first load, the fourth load will be the, sorry over here we can say that the first load from the folder will be handed over to the stretcher who will uh, run to place this load into the drawers. The second load will be moved from the dryer to the folder. The third load will be moved from the washer to the dryer and now the washer is available to accept the fourth load. And after the next 30 minutes, the first load has been placed now in the drawer. The second load has been folded. The third load has been dried and the fourth load has been washed. So this means that the first load took two hours to get completely washed, dried, folded and placed in the drawer. Now after next 30 minutes, the second load will be ready and it will be placed in the drawer. This means that the second load has taken, starting from the first one, has taken 2 hours and 30 minutes to get completely washed, dried, folded and placed in the drawer. This way all the four loads will be completely washed, dried and folded and placed in the respective drawers within a time period of 3.5 hours for all the four loads. This shows that all the functional units have been operating independently over here. Multiple tasks have been uh, performed simultaneously. That is, at a particular instant of time, when the washer is busy in uh, washing the fourth load, the dryer is busy in drying the third load, and uh, the folder is busy in folding the second load and the stretcher is uh, busy in uh, placing the first load in the respective drawers. So this shows that uh, this particular pipeline architecture enhances the overall performance of uh, the washing process by more than 50 percent. So this improvement or this concept of uh, using the pipeline architecture can be implemented onto the design of the data path and executing the instructions by using different functional units of the data path simultaneously. Here we can note that the 
pipeline rate is uh, limited by the slowest pipeline stage and time to fill the pipe, which means that overall time which it takes completely utilize all the sections of the system. For example, in the example of uh, our washing machine, when the washer, the dryer, the folder, and the stretcher all are busy in their uh, operation. However, in this case, uh, we can note that if there is an unbalance between certain uh, sections or certain stages, then it may create uh, a problem. For example, if the dryer takes longer time as compared to the washer, then before placing a new load into the dryer, we must have to wait till the dryer is busy. This operation is known as the stall operation, which means we stop for some time and when the particular operational unit is available, only then the load is transferred to this. Now let us see that how we can apply this concept to the design of uh, a processing system. For this purpose, as we already noticed in case of uh, multi-cycle architecture, that we can divide an uh, instruction into five distinct steps. These five steps are the instruction fetch, instruction decode and uh, data register read, the execute, either execute an instruction or uh, calculate the address if it is a memory reference instruction and then perform the memory operation either read or write and at the end we have to perform the write back operation particularly in case of the load operation. Then the data is read from the memory and then it is uh, stored at uh, and it is loaded into the register. These five operations are can be treated as the five stages of pipeline. And now you can see it from uh, this uh, block diagram how we can divide our data path into five sections and we can perform these operations in each of these stages. Here you can see that we have divided the data path into five stages. The first stage here is the instruction fetch stage. During this instruction fetch stage, the instruction is read from the instruction memory and it is placed into the instruction register and the program counter is incremented to get ready for the next instruction. Then in the second stage, which is the instruction decode written over here as the ID and the register read stage, it is uh, one where the instruction is uh, decoded and the registers are read. Here these two operations are performed just to maintain a balance between the time required to fetch an instruction and the time required to perform the decode operation and the register read operation. Because we know this thing and I have already talked about this uh, in the design of uh, multi-cycle architecture that instruction decode is performed during the first half of the clock cycle and the register read is performed during the second half of the clock cycle. Whereas the third stage as shown over here is the execute or the address calculation stage where the immediate data value is added in case of address calculation to some present contents of a register and a new address is calculated. And in case of uh, register type instructions, the values are the execution unit generates the result of uh, performing operation onto the contents of uh, two registers. Then the next stage is the memory read or write stage where 
the memory unit is being accessed and the last stage is known as the write back stage. However, here in this block diagram, you can see that we have divided the memory into two units. Why we have divided the memory into two parts as the instruction memory and the data memory, I will talk about this uh, a bit later. Now this slide shows you the function of control section. Here you can see that the first part generates the signals for uh, incrementing the program counter and for uh, reading the data are the instruction code from the instruction memory. Second stage uh, is the instruction decode, but over here uh, it is uh, only function shown over here is the transfer of data from the registers to the output buffers. That is uh, register read operations are performed, then the next is the execute. As you can see from uh, this diagram, the execute operation based on different types of uh, instruction code, different steps are being performed. For example, from the leftmost uh, block, if it is a register type instruction, that is completely executed over here. Whereas the third block here shows that if it is uh, a memory read or memory write type of uh, operations, then the memory addresses are being calculated. And the rightmost block shows you if this is a conditional branch instruction, then the condition has been evaluated over here and new address of the program counter has been generated. Then the next stage is the memory operation stage and this stage is effective only in case of uh, memory read or memory write instructions. That is in case of uh, load operation and store operation. Whereas the last uh, section shows you the register write and this register write operation is performed in uh, three different uh, cases. That is uh, in case of register R type of operations or in case of uh, immediate data type operation or in case of uh, load instruction. So with this much uh, information uh, about the basic simple design of the data path, I think you can uh, at this stage think about what can be the problems which can uh, occur. In order to identify the problem, I'll uh, go back to the example of uh, washing machine where we said that in the first 30 minutes during the first 30 minutes we load the washer and when the washer completes its operation then its load is transferred into the dryer and after next 30 minutes the load of the dryer is to be transferred to the folder and the load of the washer is to be transferred to the dryer. Now it is uh, in fact the time where we can see what type of problems can occur. When you are removing load from the dryer, at the same time we want to transfer the load from the washer into this which is creating a problem and it will not be possible. Normally, when you have to do the operations like this onto two independent uh, units, normally what we do, we usually place a bucket at, uh, along with the washer and we usually place a bucket along with the dryer. At the end of the dry operation, we transfer the load from the dryer into this bucket. And at the same time, at the end of the washing operation and before placing it into the dryer, we first place it into the bucket. This operation is equivalent to writing a value from, from the actual functional unit into a register. So this basically suggests that we must have 
some buffer register being placed in between all the stages. So, for example, now we need a bucket or a buffer stage between the instruction fetch and instruction decode section. Similarly, we need a bucket or a buffer register in between the instruction decode and the execute section. And the third buffer or a third bucket is needed in between the execute and the memory unit. And from the memory to the write back section, again, we need another storage unit. This you can see from uh, this uh, block diagram over here, where these registers, which are placed in between two functional stages, usually known as the pipeline registers. This pipeline register is divided into two parts, where these two parts are shown as shown with the help of a yellow color and with the help of uh, a blue color. The yellow color basically shows the write operation and the blue color shows the read operation. So this means that every time an instruction, first time when an instruction has been fetched, after fetching the instruction, it is placed into this intermediate register, which is available in between the instruction fetch and instruction decode section. This register is known as a pipeline register available in between the first two stages. Similarly, there is a pipeline register between the instruction decode and instruction execute section. And here, when the instruction has been read from the instruction memory, it is placed into this pipeline register. And then it is placed into the second half of the register where it is ready to be read for during the next time. Whereas once the first unit completes its operation and the second unit has read this information from the pipeline register. The first unit transferred this gain into its uh, this register section. So this way you can see that now we have placed a pipeline register in between two stages just to interface these two stages and perform a write operation first and the read operation afterward. Write operation is performed by the functional unit on the left hand side of this uh, pipeline register and read operation is performed by the functional unit shown over here on the right hand side of this pipeline register. So this way you can see that uh, we can in fact run this whole process smoothly. So here in this case the five steps which we have uh, talked about they are regarded as the five stages of the pipeline. This is uh, clear from this timing diagram. Here, uh, each of these uh, five steps will take uh, one clock cycle to complete. So, in the terms of pipeline architecture, we can say that each stage is completely executed in one clock cycle. Now, we can, uh, in fact, establish a comparison between the multi-cycle architecture and pipeline architecture and see how pipeline architecture is better as compared to single cycle architecture. For this purpose, let us uh, reconsider our uh, earlier example of uh, a segment of a program consisting of uh, three instructions where the first instruction is the load instruction, the second instruction was the store instruction and the third instruction the register type instruction. As we studied earlier in case of uh, multi-cycle architecture which is shown here uh, in this uh, diagram that the multi-cycle uh, data path can completely execute 
this uh, three instruction program in 13 microseconds if we assume that the cycle length is 1 microsecond. But the same program can be executed onto the pipeline architecture only in 7 microseconds. This shows that the pipeline architecture is approximately 2 times faster as compared to the multi-cycle architecture. However, the performance may further be improved if we take into consideration certain clock cycles of pipeline architecture when certain functional units are sitting idle. For example, in case of uh, stored instruction, right back stage is stage remains idle during the fifth clock cycle and for uh, register type instructions the memory read or write section remains idle. However, it has got its own complications and its own effects onto the overall performance of the system which we will talk about uh, later on. But still even in this particular situation it is very much clear that in all the situations pipeline architecture gives us better performance as compared to multi-cycle architecture or single cycle data path. I will now further highlight this with the help of some numerical examples and for this purpose let us uh, refer to this uh, numerical example which is given over here. In this example, we assume that the cycle time of a single cycle machine is 45 nanoseconds and of a multiple cycle and pipeline machine is 10 nanoseconds and average clock cycles per instruction due to instruction mix on multi cycle machine is 4.6. So, let us see what is the execution time on each type of machine. You can also solve this uh, example yourself by taking uh, your uh, pen and it is a very simple example where we know that if instruction cycle for a single cycle architecture is 45 nanoseconds per cycle then for a 100 cycle program it takes 4500 nanoseconds whereas for the same 100 cycle uh, program where some instructions have got instruction mix of uh, 4.6 it takes 4600 nanoseconds whereas when the same program is to be executed onto a pipeline architecture or a pipeline data path it takes only 1040 nanoseconds. In this example, you can see that the performance of pipeline data path is four times better as compared to the performance of multi cycle and single cycle data path. Now, let us uh, consider a slightly complicated example. In this example, we consider a multi cycle unpipelined processor that requires four cycles for the ALU and branch operations and five cycles for the memory operations. If we assume that the relative frequency of these operations is 40%, 25%, and 35 percent respectively and the clock cycle is 1 nanosecond. We also assume that in pipeline implementation due to clock skew and setup processor adds 0 0.2 nanoseconds to the clock. 
Now here we want to see that ignoring any latency impact, how much is the speed up from the pipeline processor. So for this purpose, let us uh, first of all uh, calculate the time required to execute a program onto unpipelined architecture. For this purpose, this is uh, shown over here that the average execution time per instruction is equal to clock cycles multiplied by the average clock cycles per instruction. And for this example, we know that the clock cycle is equal to 1 nanosecond and the average clock cycle per instruction depends upon what is the mix rate or mix ratio of different types of instructions. As we have said that it is 40% uh, and 25% of the instructions, they require four clock cycles. Therefore, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by four and 35% requires five clock cycles. Therefore, 0 0.35 multiplied by five. This gives the total average clock cycles per instructions is equal to 0 0.65 multiplied by 4 plus 0 0.35 multiplied by 5. This gives the total average execution time per instruction to be equal to 4.35 nanoseconds. Whereas on the other hand, for the pipeline architecture, we have said that the processor adds 0 0.2 to take care of the skew of the clock, it takes therefore total 1.2 nanoseconds per instruction to execute. Thus, the speed up is 4.35 divided by 1.2, which results in a value of uh, 3.62. So, this shows that pipeline data path always gives us better performance as compared to the multi-cycle data path or the single cycle data path. With this much uh, introduction about the pipeline process and the basic concept of the pipeline and its uh, overall impact on the performance of uh, the data path, let us uh, discuss this uh, with uh, more details how we can represent this whole process. Conventionally, you can see it uh, from this diagram that we can represent this uh, whole process by showing all the five stages for all instructions. In this uh, graph, you can see that uh, the horizontal axis shows the time and the vertical axis shows the flow of the program. So the first instruction which starts from the zero time, it takes five clock cycles. The second instruction starts uh, after one clock cycle and it further takes uh, five clock cycles. In this way, you can see that uh, all these instructions which are uh, executed with the help of a pipeline architecture, they are fetched one after the other almost in all the cases, they take uh, five clock cycles for the execution. Here we can see that the pipeline may be viewed as series of data paths shifted in time. This representation can help us answering the questions like, how many cycles does it take to execute a particular code? What is the ALU doing at a particular cycle. You may note here that the overlap of parts of the data path in clock cycle 5, here the register file appears twice. It is used as a source ID stage for instruction 5 and as destination in write back stage in instruction 1. Similarly, you can also note that 
the register is written in the first part which is shown here color and read in the second part memory is shown divided into two parts that is the instruction memory and the data memory the reason to divide the memory into two parts i will uh, talk about this uh, in details very shortly from this uh, graphical representation we can uh, very easily find out whether there can be some situations which can uh, create problem in a pipeline architecture or not the answer is yes there are situations when this whole uh, pipeline data path can give us some uh, troubles these situations are usually known as the hazards of the pipeline architecture and they can be classified into three types of hazards known as the structural hazards the data hazards and the control hazards the structural hazard means that due to the structure if we need some resources at a particular time the resources are not available properly similarly data hazards means that if the data needed for a particular instruction has a dependency on some previous instruction then it creates problem similarly the control hazards are those where some operation is to be performed before evaluating the condition so this thing shows that in fact the hazard situation occurs when some required section of the data path is not available or it is not getting correct information to perform some operation on to this so what we have to do in this particular case as i told you in the beginning from our uh, example of uh, washing machine if say the folder is not available and the load is available from the dryer but the folder is uh, busy in uh, watching the tv and he is not uh, available over there what to do everything has to stop till the folder is back the required load is handed over to him and only then he starts this process is known as the stall operation that is we stop everything and then we wait till the required functional unit is available however this stall operation basically degrades the overall performance of the system in order to explain to you how the stall operation degrades the performance let us consider this example in this example we assume that the ideal average clock cycles per instruction ignoring the pipe clearing cycle of the pipe is almost equal to 1 the pipeline clock cycles per instruction with stalls is equal to this uh, ideal cpi plus the number of cycles for which the system has to stall we can look into the degrading of uh, speed up from uh, two different uh, perspectives which uh, you can uh, see from uh, this slide firstly the speed up with respect to unpipelined data path can be determined by dividing the clock cycles per instructions 
for unpipelined data path with the factor which is equal to 1 plus stall cycles per instruction. This 1 plus stall cycles per instruction is equal to the clock cycles for pipeline data path with stall operations. In this expression, as the denominator is always greater than 1, therefore, the speed up in case of uh, stall in the pipeline data path is always less with respect to the unstalled pipeline data path. Secondly, we can also see the speed up with respect to the pipeline depth. The pipeline depth means the number of stages of the pipeline. We know that uh, each instruction executes in number of clock cycles equal to the number of stages of the pipeline. Depth, therefore, we can see the speed up with respect to the pipeline depth can be expressed as the pipeline depth divided by 1 plus stall cycles per instruction. Again, in this case, as the denominator is more than 1, therefore, the speed up is degraded. In case of pipeline data path with stall operations. So, here we have in fact discussed what is a pipeline data path and we have compared its performance with the single cycle and multiple cycle data path. Today, while concluding the discussion which we have uh, been making uh, during this uh, whole time, I would say that uh, we have uh, understood how a pipeline data path works, what are different stages of uh, a pipeline data path. While using a pipeline data path, what type of uh, basic problems we can uh, find? Here we discussed or uh, rather I will say that I introduced to you the three major problems that is the problem due to the structure and the problem due to the data dependency and the problem due to the evaluation of a condition after making an instruction fetch or after making uh, certain operations. So, all these factors, I will uh, talk about these uh, hazards in details in the next lecture, whereas today I will uh, conclude this discussion by saying that uh, the performance of a pipeline data path is always better as compared to the performance of a single cycle data path and the performance of a multiple cycle data path. Moreover, I will also suggest you at this stage that you go through the appendix given at the end of your textbook. There are a uh, number of uh, solved examples also which are uh, useful to understand the concept of the pipeline data path and comparison of its uh, performance with the multi-cycle data path and also the factors with the help of which we can enhance the performance. However, next time I will inshallah discuss in more details what are the hazards and how we can overcome these hazards by using different techniques. These techniques I will uh, explain to you in the next lecture. Till then, Allah Hafiz.